Hey, what is going on everybody? How are you all doing today? I hope you all are having a wonderful and fantastic day today, and if not, hopefully you all will have a better tomorrow. So today I wanted to have a discussion about the problems with Ruby's antagonist and how they can be improved, because as of late it seems that there have been more and more problems concerning some of the antagonist characters, and I really want to go over this and how they can be improved and things can go better for the antagonist. But before that, I wanted to let everyone know why this video is late and I really want to apologize for that because when I was going to work on this video, my editing software for the video literally did not want to open. So I kept constantly trying to open applications to repair it or refresh it, several different things to try to make sure I could get it to work. I even looked up so many different solutions to try to make this thing work and it would not work. So finally, whenever I fully refreshed my computer, it started to work again. So yeah, it was one big hassle and I really do apologize for this issue. It had stressed me out and I just feel really bad that this video has come out way later than I originally had planned. So I wanted to keep you all updated on the big issue here. So for that, I really and sincerely apologize and I will try to make sure this doesn't happen ever again. But anyways, sit back, relax. I hope you all enjoy. Let's go ahead and get started. So one of the biggest problems with Ruby's antagonists is that they don't really feel like characters. They continuously keep losing. And a lot of people feel like the antagonists don't really matter as much. There are some people who think that the antagonists just aren't even relevant because of the fact of the way they've been treated as a reason. And I really wanted to go into these issues because I have been noticing more and more over time that there have been several issues concerning the antagonists that keep cropping up and that just make the antagonists not even feel like characters. And I think it's a big issue and I'm going to address all this in this video. And some of this I have talked about, but I'm going to really go into full detail on everything because this is something that the writers need to really do. They need to try to improve the antagonist. So let's start off by looking at it like this. Several of the antagonists ever since Volume 4 onward, they have really felt either very one-dimensional in their characters or they feel like they are nothing more than a stepping stone as to trying to progress the plot. So let's go ahead and address the first issue of the antagonist characters. The first one being the antagonists have really been cut down from the characters they once were for the ones that were within volumes 1 through 3. Now what I mean by this is let's take Adam for example. Adam was a character who was a revolutionist, one who wanted to really bring forth the Faunus in a better light, but doing it more so within a moral gray area, making him look like a character that could have been possibly redeemed at one point in time. Also looking at Adam's character, they then totally cut him down to being nothing more than a crazy stalker ex-boyfriend, and that's really all it was, and his potential was entirely wasted. And that's one big problem. A lot of the characters moving forward in Volume 4 and onward, a lot of them just feel like their motives are either cut down to just solely being revenge-based, or they have just lost everything they originally had and it was just completely erased, as if their original motive never even existed. And this is one big problem for the antagonist because one thing that you have to look at when it comes to characters like this, even if they are antagonists, is they are the heroes of their own story. Okay, so a character wants revenge, but there could be more than just the layer of revenge, but a lot of them are really cut down to that one specific layer. Now, there's one character I can really kind of give a pass to when it comes to their motive being revenge, and that one antagonist character that gets this pass would actually have to come down to being Neapolitan. Now, the reason why I say Neo is because it makes sense why she would come back to the plot to get revenge for the death of Roman Torchwick. I can't really blame Neo on that one, because if you look at it, that would really be the only reason for Neo to return into the plot at this point moving forward, because she lost someone that was the only person within her life, the one person that she cared for, and thus, if you think about it, the song One Thing states that, taking away the one thing that was important to her. So, Neo's revenge plot, this is something that makes sense, this is something that I can sit by and say, okay, yeah, that's fine, I understand why Neo is wanting revenge, and that's fine. You have one character that wants revenge for good reasoning, 
And there is nothing wrong for this one reasoning because it really adds up and it makes a lot of sense. And if you look at other antagonist characters, though, we have more than one antagonist wanting revenge at this point. Now, let's look at Cinder. Cinder brought down Beacon. And she did this because she believed that it was right. And in her speech, she believes that Ozpin was doing nothing more than manipulating the people. She believes that Ozpin himself was really doing nothing more than blindsiding them for his own cause. And she states that within her speech in Volume 3, after Penny dies. And that sounded great, but then it becomes one-dimensional to nothing more than revenge. And let's take Hazel, for example. Hazel was very predictable, and even I stated before it was revealed that it's probably the fact that Hazel's fighting because someone that he loved died. And it turned out that it was his sister, because during a training regiment, she died, and it was on Ospin's behalf because she wanted to be a huntress. So, we have another character based on revenge, but if you look at Hazel, aside from that, there's not really a whole lot there. I mean, yeah, he wants revenge, and I get that. but you have to think about antagonists for a minute. Antagonists need to have their own story. They don't need to just sit here, be fully nothing more than revenge base. This is their only reason to be fighting for this side because, hey, look, I want revenge. Revenge is it. And that's not really throwing the character's personality in there. That's just telling you, hey, look, this character wants revenge. It's not a personality. It's just something they want for something that happened to them. And if you look at Roman Torchwick, the reason why I really liked his character, besides the fact that he was based off of A Clockwork Orange, is the fact that Roman was witty. He didn't have to really worry about what he had to gain. To him, it was about what he had to lose. And that's what I really liked about Roman Torchwick, and I think that when they killed him, I think that they got rid of a very good character. And not only that, but he was interesting to watch on screen. He was somebody that always had funny comments or funny remarks to actually state about situations. He may not have been the strongest character, but he did bring amusement. And he didn't just sit there and go, I want revenge. This is what I want. No, he was a character that he was a master thief. He was somebody who basically just stole to get whatever he wanted, to get by in his life, and go on to the next big thing. That's what I liked about Roman Torchwick, and that to me is what made him so good as a character. And Roman just seemed like an intelligent individual, and I liked Roman Torchwick. He had more to him than just one little thing. He was witty. He was interesting. He also apparently didn't like the Faunus, because he called them animals. And that's like a racist term to them. And he was something else. You look at Adam. Adam originally had so much potential. I've talked about this before. He could have been so much. He was a revolutionist. He became a terrorist with the fall of Beacon. I mean, Adam had so much going for his character. His fighting style was interesting. And not only that, but he didn't even want to be involved in human affairs originally. He had no concern for the humans, and he really just wanted to pave a way for the Faudus and what he believed would have been the right way to go. And originally, Adam actually had an interesting idea, and of course, over time, he did change from who he once was. But that's the thing. Adam had potential. He was interesting. Adam seemed like a character that could have gone places, and then they dropped the ball with him. And... Then they made him, like I said, a one-dimensional, creepy ex-boyfriend stalker. And it's a problem. You can't just keep doing this with your antagonist. And you need to give them character. You need to make them stand out from one another. And that's the other thing. Like I said, with Cinder, she believed that she was the hero of her own story. And now it's nothing more than revenge. And this is a problem. And I think that they need to work on this. I think that they need to make the characters feel like they actually are somebody rather than just a stepping stone for the plot to progress or for the character to develop over something else. And here's another thing I will say when it comes to the antagonist. They do need to win more because as of Volume 4, the heroes have constantly been winning. Now, there's nothing wrong with the heroes winning. Not saying that's a bad thing. And, of course, in Volume 4, they needed a win after the events of Volume 3. After the events of Volume 3 with the antagonist winning and Cinder actually getting to do exactly what she'd planned for and destroy Beacon, well, 
there you go. You had a significant volume, and that's one big reason as to why people really enjoyed Volume 3, because the antagonists were consistent. Their motives felt like they were their own to each character, and the antagonist felt like a genuine threat. And it really built up the antagonist characters significantly. This plotting and scheming from Volumes 1 and 2, when then leading up to Volume 3, and then flipping the script, was excellent. I think that Volume 3 was a volume that most people can sit here and say they love the most because the script was flipped and we did get to see the antagonist actually be characters of their own. They felt like they were different in their own motives and their own beliefs. And not only that, but with Cinder, for example, all her planning, all her scheming, it all worked out in the end and it really showed that she was an intelligent character, someone that planned ahead and that even throughout the obstacles that were thrown in front of her, she was able to succeed in the end. Now, let's look at Volume 4 and onward. Let's look at Tyrion's character. We understand Tyrion as a sadistic character, someone who seems to have jokes about hurting others, and someone who seems to really just get enjoyment out of the thrill of a fight. And that's interesting, but let's put it like this. Tyrion does lose. But he does give a good display of his power. He's stronger than Team Ranger, so we know in the power scaling, he is higher than they are when it comes to his power level when he's introduced. And it took Crow to have to make an example of how powerful Tyrion is. Crow, who is a Vendred Huntsman, he goes up against Tyrion, and he's holding his own, but at the same time, Tyrion is doing very well himself. And this made you feel that Tyrion was a threat, especially when he poisons Crow, and showing his power level here gives you the idea that Salem and her followers, that they are a threat, that they are something to not be weary of. And we go to Volume 5, the next problem here when it comes to Volume 5, all the fact that it was not a good volume, aside from that part, the antagonist, yet again, they lose. And the problem here is, is that not a single antagonist wins this fight at all, and the stakes for the protagonist start to drop. They don't even feel like they're existent. I mean, at least Volume 4 could put stakes onto Crow, making you question whether he was going to live or not. It comes to Volume 5, there were multiple problems here. Because several characters were nerfed, obviously. But the big ordeal is Hazel and Emerald and Mercury, they didn't succeed. Cinder didn't succeed. And... It really just wasn't good at all. Not even the stakes were there. It didn't feel like they existed. Adam didn't even win either. There was nobody at the end of the day that were the antagonists of Volume 5. Nobody won. Nobody got away with a win. And it made the antagonists feel like they're not a threat. Adam and Cinder to multiple people felt like they were nothing more than jokes. Especially Adam. Adam got the worst of it. And this just made a lot of fans think, well, where's the threat? Where, where's the big deal with the antagonist? What's really here to make them feel like they're a threat at all to the protagonist at this point? Especially if not one antagonist can come out on top in the end. You see, that hurts the antagonist, and that doesn't make them look good at all. You had constant losses in Volume 5. For the antagonist, a lot of them felt very one-dimensional, and even when they finally did start to recorrect Cinder's character to making her an intelligent character when it comes to Raven and catching on to her schemes, at the end of the day, well, it still falls flat because nobody won. Not a single antagonist won. And the thing is, the writers prove that they can write an antagonist well. I mean, look at Mercury. I have praised this because Mercury's character was written well. We knew this from the song I'm the One of Mercury's backstory about his abusive father. And then they go more into it and explaining why Mercury is the way that he is as well as him training all the time to make up for what he lost. And this is a good thing. I like what they did with Mercury's character. It was excellent. And then we go to what happened with Adam. Adam was just written poorly. And they just stripped him of everything that could have made him a great antagonist character. At the end of the day, they then drop the ball. They go from a great moment with Mercury to dropping every single last thing that Adam stood for as a character. It shows you the good and the bad writing. Good writing, Mercury. Bad writing, Adam. And that's a shame. Because if you make the characters go from being very consistent like with Volume 3 to inconsistent with Volume 4 onward... Well, that's a problem, 
because then the characters don't feel like who they once were. They feel nothing more than walking shells of who they once were, and who's going to care about that? Who finds that interesting? And while Volume 6 started to handle Mercury well, this is now an opportunity to go into Cinder's backstory, for example. She has been a character that has been there since Volume 1, they have not focused on her, and this is the chance to really put that focus there as to why she believed that what she was doing against Ozpin was right, as to why she joined Salem, what her backstory was, and if you look at her character, by the way she was being treated in Volume 4 by all of her colleagues that are working with Salem, they all seem to put her down, and she seems like she's an insecure character, and they could actually work on that, and showing why she's a perfectionist, for example, because she is one. Whenever her plans don't go the way she wants them to, she does get very upset over it. This is an opportunity to work on Cinder, and this is something that I think would be great to explore. And look at Neo. This is the opportunity to work on Neo, how she met Roman Torchwick even. And this could even open doors to Roman Torchwick's past. This is the time that they could put good emphasis on the antagonist characters. They could really do so much with these characters in Atlas. And look at Tyrion and look at Watts. We can learn more about Tyrion and why he is the way he is, we can learn at least something about Watts, considering all we know is he seems to be the intelligence of the group, and that he's a doctor. There's so much we can learn about Watts even within this volume that's upcoming, and I hope that they really do try to work on this. I really hope that they do try to explore the antagonist characters. I'm not saying don't explore or do things for the protagonist, but the antagonist, they need their time to shine. And this is the opportunity to really pull through, have the antagonist win some fights, and this could really make the antagonist feel like they are a threat again. And who knows, maybe this could even make some people say, hey, I kind of like this character now that I know of what their motive is. And I think that this could really pull through, because if the antagonists are written well, if they are done right, they can be very likable too. And I think that a lot of people have just distanced themselves from the antagonist characters because they just keep getting screwed over. I mean, realistically, at the end of the day, they have just been constantly screwed over ever since Volume 4 onward. And I think that this is the chance to make them feel like they're important, make them feel like they're a threat, go into who they are, and have them win some battles. There's nothing wrong with having antagonists win. As a matter of fact, there are times where people will root for the antagonist because, well, for one, some of the antagonists, their motives may be something that people may actually see eye to eye with and can understand. And remember, another thing that's important when it comes to antagonist characters, protagonist, they have their side of the story, the antagonists have their side of the story. And it's only right that we learn of the antagonist side of the story, too, as to why they are the way they are. What made them come to this point in their life to think that this is the right thing to do? And if they were to explore this, if they were to just say, hey, let's focus on some of these antagonists, I think this could really go well if they write this in a good way and they really polish this. And I think that a lot of people could really start to like antagonists more in Ruby because... There could just be so much to explore with them, and this is just such an opportunity, I think, and I think that they need to really work on this. But anyways, I'll be back again on Tuesday. Let me know what you think down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. But anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did enjoy, hit the video with a like. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Share this with your friends if you found this informative or useful, and join the Discord if you want to talk there, too. But anyways, I hope you all have yourselves a wonderful and fantastic day today, and remember, if today was not a good day, tomorrow could always be better. Take care of yourselves and everyone around you, and have yourselves a good one out there, everybody.